A few videos ago, we took a look at Saul and how he was chosen as a leader, um, as king. And he made some unwise choices because he was following after his own desires and his own you know, selfish nature. And he rejected God and following God. And it essentially led to his demise. And God rejected Saul as king. I'll link that video somewhere over here if you're wanting to watch it. Check it out for some backstory. So now we're in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. And ever since we've done that Bible study, I've just been thinking about this one scripture where it says, The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. And so we're just going to look at that scripture today. Change is something that I don't really like. <laughs> I love when things are the same and when they're normal. I went on vacation over the summer and it was great and I enjoyed it, but I was really anxious to get back to my regular routine, back to my <laughs> regular, you know, my home and just everything that I'm used to. I love to live in familiarity. Maybe you can, um, you know, agree with me. Maybe you're someone who's just like that. But, um, you know, it's important to notice that life needs to change sometimes. That's part of life. We have to change sometimes. And if you're not changing and growing as a person, then there's a problem. Sometimes I'll think about past situations and even past relationships. Recently, I saw someone that I went to college with got married. And this was a person that I spent a lot of time in college with. We saw each other pretty much every day, even on the weekend sometimes to study together. And they got married and I thought that was so cool. And it made me just think back to those days and reminisce, not necessarily wanting to be back in college, oh no. But I was definitely thinking back on that relationship and how I had missed that in a sense, those relationships that I had with those awesome people that I went to school with. And so do you ever catch yourself doing that? Do you ever think back to a friendship maybe that you had that is no longer do you think about you know maybe you've been hurt maybe you're mourning the loss of a of what you thought your marriage would be because maybe you experienced a hurt in some capacity or maybe you you know lost a loved one a child a pregnancy whatever that is that you've lost that you're grieving for maybe you can you know maybe you think about that from time to time and so God asked Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? And I tried to find an answer, even though it does not say in the Bible. So who knows, right? It doesn't say in the Bible. So the, everyone's guesses, all these scholars' guesses are just that, guesses. Um, but many people believe that Samuel mourned for several years. I mean, he probably spent a good deal of time with Saul, and he probably you know, was really good friends with Saul at the very least. And he was probably very saddened by the fact that Saul really, you know, didn't incorporate God into his life and didn't follow God like he should have. And Samuel probably mourned not only the loss of Saul, you know, being king, of course, but the, the loss of that relationship, because the Bible said that they never saw each other again after that. Um, and so, you know, Samuel was mourning that loss. And when we look at the Bible historically, when Aaron died and when Moses died, the mourning period for Israel was 30 days. And so I don't want to say that we need to put a timeline on mourning and grieving, but there, there is a timeline that has been shown in the Bible, not necessarily something specific like 30 days, like I mentioned, but God seems to place importance on a time for different things in our lives. If we look at Ecclesiastes, for example, Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse four says, there is a time for mourning, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. So although, you know, there's a certain period of time 
that one is to mourn, that doesn't necessarily mean that you completely forget that something happened, right? Sometimes we romanticize the past. I'll bring up, bring up my previous example of the person I went to school with, to college with. I'm thinking of all the good times and all the happy times and thinking of the relationship. But, you know, we tend to forget about, you know, when times were not good, you know, like all the stressful things that I had to go through during college. And maybe all the times that that person wasn't the greatest friend to me, um, If you look at the Israelites in Numbers chapter 11, they romanticized being slaves in Egypt. I mean, they were getting food from heaven and somehow they were able to think about their past and glorify Egypt as if it was this great, (laughs) great situation that they were taken out of when it truly wasn't. They were slaves. They were being overworked. Um, And you know, the Israelites somehow, you know, because they're in a sticky situation um, in Numbers 11, they romanticize their past. And we can do that too sometimes. I've had friendships in my life where I will mourn the loss of the friendship and I will only think about all the good things, which is not necessarily bad, but it's also good to have that balance and remember, okay, this is why, you know, this relationship is not, is no longer. So there is a time for everything. There is a time to mourn, for sure. And whether it's 30 days or 300 days, that's, I'm not the one to put a timeline on anything. If God hasn't said, you know, anything, then who am I? But God has said through his word that there is a time to mourn. And then there's a time to move on. And that is what we are looking at here in Samuel. Focusing too much on our grieving and mourning and our loss can take our eyes away from the next step that God has in store for our lives. And so Samuel here, God says, how long will you mourn for Saul? Again, there is no specific number here because of, you know, mourning the loss of a child, for example, is not the same as mourning the loss of a friendship. It's just not. It's just not. And so, you know, we live, we live and um, we have a God who gives us freedom and liberties and he guides us one step at a time. And I truly believe that's why there is no specific number as to how long you should mourn for. But however long that takes, there is a time to mourn and then there is a time to move on. Samuel says, how long will you mourn for Saul? I have rejected him as king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. God needed Samuel to move on because if Samuel spent too much time focusing on the loss and the grieving in the morning, then he would have never been able to go to Jesse of Bethlehem and see that God had chosen David as his king, as the next king. Samuel would have missed the assignment that God had for him because he was so hyper-focused on the loss in the morning. And now, you know, Samuel will never forget Saul, right? You'll never forget that loss and you'll never, you know, forget the grief and the sadness associated with that. But eventually it is time to move on. It is time to take your horn and go. So like I mentioned, you know, whether it is whatever it is in your life. It's the loss of a relationship. Maybe it's the loss of your freedom. Maybe you had an idea of what, you know, marriage and motherhood would be like, and now you're married and a mother, and you realize that you are mourning the loss of the freedom you had when you were single and could do whatever you wanted with your time. Whatever it is, you have to decide that, you know, okay, mourning, I'm mourning. Yes, I'm mourning. And accept that. And then look to God. And he will guide you to move on. That is the key. When we try to move on on our own strength and on our own capacity, that's where struggle can happen. We are not meant to guide our own lives. But when we look to God, right? Samuel, God said to Samuel, you know, he said, how long will you mourn for for Saul? And then he gave him his next assignment. Nowhere in the text does it say that Samuel, you know, decided to do the next thing it you know god clearly was guiding him um 
And even in verse two, Samuel had his concerns. He said, but how can I go? You know, if Saul hears about it, he will kill me. So this is obviously something that Samuel has, you know, maybe God has prompted Samuel before, you know, go on, go to Jesse, to Bethlehem, move on. And Samuel resisted. You know, I have a great inkling that this is probably not the first time that God has tried to lead Samuel in this way. But like I mentioned before throughout this video, there is a time and there is a, a season for mourning. And then there is a time to take your horn and go. There is a time to move on. So maybe if you're like me and you have a hard time moving on, or, you know, maybe you romanticize the past, or if you're just a little bit sad about the loss of whatever it is, um, just know that you can turn to God and he will comfort you. And not only will he comfort you, he will guide you and move you into the direction that you ought to be going in. So I know this was a quicker video, but I just wanted to share that with you all today. I hope it was helpful. Um, let me know what you learned. I post a new Bible study video on Wednesdays and Fridays at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I can't wait to study the Bible with you again.